right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with my guests on this podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you, my fellow millennials, should understand and adopt. In this episode, I'm joined by Jeff Booth. He's an entrepreneur and thought leader who's lived at the forefront of technology change for 20 years. Currently a general partner at Ego Death Capital, Bitcoin-only venture fund. He's known for his insights on technology, economics, and the future of deflation. In his book, The Price of Tomorrow, he argues that advancing te- technologies will inherently lead to deflation and that society should embrace rather than resist this trend. When I started this podcast, Jeff, I had a list of 50 people that I was dying to talk to and you were in my top five. So I'm super excited that in episode 10, you're already here, man. So welcome. Thanks. Well, thanks for having me, Bram. Pleasure. Thanks. Yeah, I um, I wanted to start with a, with a question. I actually had a, had a conversation again today where this term theft came up. And in previous episodes, um, you know, and this conversation was about Bitcoin and, and uh, economics, etc. And in previous episodes, I've talked about how difficult it is when like you talk to a newcomer to Bitcoin and you talk about inflation and debasement and that they are in essence theft. And in my experience, like people find that a really like hard, hard word. And sometimes they tune out maybe because it's so confrontational or something. Um, but I also have uh, have heard you use the word theft a lot. Can you explain like why inflation and debasement are actually theft? I think you're the you're the person that can exp- can explain this most rationally, <laughs> probably. Yeah, I think it. Um, and and by the way, I understand why people would not want to see it that way. Um, and or if it it challenges some of their beli- uh, beliefs, and then they want to push back. So I totally understand and have empathy for people sitting inside a system. But but when you realize that uh, the free market is deflationary, right? And that's not a guess. Like prices fall to the marginal cost of production. Um. We have exponentially um, rising productivity uh, because of technology. And um, by the way, a couple of insights to that. If you measured that productivity through the entire manipulated system, you wouldn't see as much productivity. But mm-hmm. if you measured productivity it, where what's happening, you have exponential technology uh, that's is that, driving product. Is that also, sorry to interrupt, but is that also, I saw a great chart on Twitter of someone who had the price of the NASDAQ in dollars, that goes yeah. up, obviously, but against M2, like in real value, it actually yeah. goes down and it's under yeah. the value of the tech in 2000, which arguably we now have better technology, yeah. right? But it's worth less. This, this is why it's so hard to see because people are measuring through a system with the error code in it. So, so what you have to do is you have to use first principles to understand what would happen if there was no error code, if there was no theft or debasement or anything else. So, so why I find it easier just to talk about technology in that way is, is you can have some first principle discussions. You can say, um, do prices fall to the marginal cost of production over time? The answer is yes. Like no matter what, over a long enough time horizon, prices fall to the marginal cost of production. Then you can ask, what is the marginal cost of production of a line of code? And then you can ask, what is the marginal cost of production for lines of code written by other lines of code? And you can see where we're going um, and why technology drives. Uh, and and if if number one is true and number two is true, then that means if you had a, a honest ledger or an honest monetary system that didn't debase currencies, that didn't change the rules, didn't print more currency units, then prices would fall every year as the, as society and society would live on top of that prices falling every year. Some, some places prices would fall faster, some places, uh, and it would run at the rate of technology in the free market. And so every year, based on just that being true, um, you would probably gain, people would have to work 5% less uh, get in, or get, get 5% more uh, each year just by staying standard. So they're, they're val- everyone on the planet would, would benefit. You'd get, be getting richer. But that's not the system we live in. 
right? So, so, so that's that's a that's a system uh, that would be true in a system that couldn't be manipulated. And the system, but this is important because you have to stop this. So that's true. And yeah. what I'm about to say is true. If you allowed a credit-based system to collapse, if you let a credit-based system prices fall, then the debt becomes, uh, in real terms, you can't pay back immediately, and the whole thing keeps falling. Mm -hmm. So it keeps falling. So we have to explore that system too. And that system that we live in, or we price most things from, today has about $400 trillion of insolvent debt. So the debt's already insolvent, right? If yep. you tried to pay back the $400 trillion at $1 a second, it would take 12,683,000 years to pay back. But it's worse than that because, because that's assuming you could pay it back. And you have to ask yourself, where are the taxes to pay back the debt mm -hmm. from your calculator app that you use every day now? Yeah. Right. It's free. The point mm -hmm. is the technology is driving these things to free and that you create the abundance based on that technology. So what's happening is the ledger is being manipulated at a greater and greater rate that the theft it, and it's transferring that wealth from, uh, from people who, because inflation is wage deflation. Yeah. Um, and, and it's transferring that wealth from uh, people who have assets to people or from people who don't have assets. So their wages are going down in real terms because to try to pay back the debts that is already insolvent. And it's transferring it to people who will hold assets or, um, or government to be able to do that process. And it is theft because you don't have a vote in it. You don't. Uh, so both these things are true. Right. So yep. we say we live in a, uh, um, and, and so one system, what it would look like under an honest system and what it does look like under the system that we, uh, we, we drive all of our decisions by. Now, the problem is inside that system that we live in and we price everything by, we don't see how great an impact that is on our lives. We don't. So we just trust all of these institutions. Um, it's, like it always used to be. And so these things are true at the same time. What's happening with Bitcoin is if you're, if you're measure if you're measuring Bitcoin in price from the manipulated system, then you're actually thinking about trading Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. What's actually happening is we have two different worlds emerging. One that's pricing what I just explained that can't be fucked with. And so if you're measuring in Bitcoin, prices will fall for fall in to, for you forever. And if you're pricing in the existing system, prices will rise forever. Is it then also that because we changed the technology of money with, with Bitcoin to a protocol, to two lines of code, don't want to say it's free, but you know, it also goes down to, um, Marginal At cost least, of marginal it, cost of production, but, but yeah, actually that's it, true right now. You can see hash yeah. rate going up. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. So instead of also the value of the of the old money becoming less and less and less, it's the new money that's just going up forever. Then. So I'd like to look at it the other way, because mm. because if you think it's going up forever, you're measuring it from the, the value thing. in the old system. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And that's what most people do. And, and so if you do that in Argentina today, Bitcoin's hitting all time records. Now, are the people in Argentina necessarily richer because their money's losing value at that rate? And, and in it, so if you measure in the debasing currency, you're automatically defaulting to measure yeah. your world in the broken in, uh, on the broken ledger. And if you're measuring in the, in, in, in this thing that can't be manipulated, you're automatically measuring your world in in economic law that prices fall to the marginal cost of production over time. And how do we then take a step to an abundant future? Like if this is the cause, what will it result in? Like what is, why will the future then be abundant? So be, because, because 
the incentives are exactly opposite from the existing system. And most people carry their baggage from just like you're doing right now in pricing, right? The most people carry their baggage from the old system on how it looks under um, misaligned incentives to the new system on how it doesn't, uh, how, how it doesn't. And they're totally different systems that work almost 180 from each other. One concentrates wealth and very few hands and power and eventually, eventually destroys uh, 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 destroys what you believe your democracy is mm -hmm. um, because money is superordinate to laws. If it wasn't, then, then the places with the most broken money in the world would have the best laws protecting their citizens. citizens. Why doesn't it look like that? So you can see what I'm saying is true, right? Mm -hmm. And now you just have to ask how, how fast are we destroying our money here? And you can see how fast laws will break down and division of society will break down as a result. And all of these things are consequences of broken money that get worse and worse. So you can ask yourself, where are you on that lever? You don't vote in your, in your country for how much money is manipulated. Yeah, correct. And as that becomes a greater and greater stealth tax or repressive tax that hurts some people in favor of others, um, then, um, then it becomes more and more of the, the, the amount of revenue the government's making that's based on theft. And as yeah. it becomes more and more based on, so you don't have a vote in, in one of the most important drivers of wealth in your life. So how could you say that you actually live in uh, um, a democracy if you don't have a vote in one of the most important drivers? And you can see by that construct why all over the world individual rights and freedoms are going down because they have to go down over time to support theft that has to grow exponentially to be able to, to pay a debt that is already insolvent. Yeah. So, and that leads to a control function out of government. So, and so all of these things that we see all over the world and why it's really why people get trapped in them from the existing system is, um, is they make them stronger through their actions. They think that there's a solve by dividing society, right? So how would you get elected and how would you get elected in, in a system that looked like that? you would prey on a whole bunch of people that, uh, that said, I can solve your problem. It's those bad people that do that, that you divide society and it's, and, um, and you would sit on top of that by, by dividing. And then when it couldn't fix it because it's based on broken money in that, and you've already uh, divided your society, you would have to create a bigger enemy elsewhere. Right. And you'd have to convince your society to go to war, to fight for the thing that they believe in, to be able to create a war some, somewhere else. That's it's why these things are pretty natural and what we're having today and why the world gets pretty frightening from the system that's yeah. decaying. And so how do you solve that? You just impose Bitcoin imposes a discipline. It's a, it's becoming a peer to peer internet backed by energy. Yeah. That, um, and you impose that discipline and the incentives that that creates that, uh, that, that have more and more people walking across the bridge to create the new, uh, the, uh, the new system. We're still really early. This system has more power in our lives and yeah. we feed it. Um, the one we're in the decaying system and we feed it by yelling at it, by marching against it, by <laughs> voting for it and everything else. Yeah. And people don't realize that they could stop paying for $400 trillion of debt tomorrow, today, walk across to the new system and start building onto that system and their energy, every single one of us, what you're doing with this podcast might touch a bunch of people that then go out and touch a bunch of other people and, and what it means is the future doesn't just happen to us. We create it. And so what, what you're doing right now, what I'm doing right now is creating a brighter future by moving to Bitcoin and, and building on to, on top of an honest uh, ledger. And, and as more and more people do, the world just changes. Yeah. So now, now I'm, I'm thinking 
to go back to the question about the theft, I think it's interesting, right? Because when you say theft, or when I say theft sometimes in my conversation, it sounds like my opinion, right? Like a radical opinion. But I think how you explain it is just an objective uh, realization and description of how it currently works. And also, it's so far away from uh, most people because it's been abstracted so much, right? And, yeah. and when you put that next to the system of Bitcoin where... Yeah, I, I really love the term, you know, in Bitcoin, you follow the rules and in the other system, you follow the rulers, right? And I, I think that perfectly illustrates it. And it's a true 180 of ultimate, almost engineered truth, I always say about Bitcoin, right? Or uh, it's very transparent versus layer on layer of of abstraction and, and therefore also, yeah, just a hard understanding of what am I actually participating in? So... And then when someone says it's theft, <laughs> you know, that's obviously a, an instant confrontation with, you know, whatever the unknowing belief is probably of the current yeah. system, right? Is it, why I like to w walk through um, this from a first principles discussion on, bo on both is because both these things are true. Like, and which, so yeah. um, your life because of your beliefs and how you see the world will be true for you, even if my life and my beliefs in the world are, are, and um, would depict a different truth for me, right? Yeah. But if I tried to impose my belief on you by yelling at you, you probably wouldn't, the last thing you would do is change. And, and, wor and worse, if you were, if you were the, if you were taken from the most, right? and you were at the bottom of the social economic ladder and, and you, uh, you couldn't pay your bills, you couldn't pay food and everything else. You would be more susceptible to somebody who said, I'm going to solve your problem and should give you money. Even though work also, exactly, right? <laughs> but, yeah. but again, but, but, you, but you'd be more susceptible because you can't think through first principles. Mm -hmm. Um, when you're in, or it's really hard to think about thinking in first principles and, and what I'm able to think and what we're talking about right now, when you're, when you're scared for your life or your family's life, or you have emotion dri dr driving you. So the thing that creates the fear that keeps people stuck is the same thing that gives the power to the system to keep them stuck. And if somebody outside that system yells at them or says it's theft from that you're not meeting yeah. them where, where they are they're mm -hmm. in a different spot you might for you you might have already done the work you understand what this looks like and it's easy to think that everybody in the world has done that work because you have and it doesn't look like that most people in the world are stuck yeah. in the system feeding it making it stronger because of their fear yeah this is a nice leeway into another question I had. So your your firm is called Ego Death Capital. I love I love that name. <laughs> and, you, and you chose it for a reason, of course. You know, like uh, you actually just said it. You know, people a lot of people say that to understand Bitcoin, you need to do the work. Uh, part of doing this work, in, in my opinion, is like lots of discovery and self reflection and reprogramming. You know, around personal beliefs that you used to operate from, but also like unconscious beliefs yep. that you know were just uh, uh that that you just gathered along the way um how do you define this work and what does it have to do with ego death um yeah so you're you're right a bunch of these uh uh it, for me too in bitcoin understanding that a lot of just because of i was born in a certain place Mm -hmm. gave me um, a massive advantage. And the reason I was born in a certain pl pl uh, place that essentially were, it was at the top of the, uh, at the top of the theft of a monetary system. Yeah. Gave me the same advantage as somebody in Africa that was at the bottom of the theft of the uh, monetary system gave a disadvantage to. Mm -hmm. So I had, a, I had a hard time because because through uh, uh, previously I believe it just and it's not it's not it, this is true too it's not that I didn't work extraordinarily hard learned a bunch made a ton of mistakes created and everything else 
but I, but I realized that I had an easier time on that, on that ladder than somebody who was born somewhere else. So it was just on the inverse of my privilege. And so those were, those were lessons that, that as I went down the Bitcoin rabbit hole that I just I had to come to terms with. And I really, what would it look like on a new system? And on a new system, it would, uh, talent is globally distributed. Opportunities are not mm -hmm. now on Bitcoin talent uh, opportunities are globally distributed. And so if somebody wants to fight that, they're going to be fighting talent all over the world that has just as much opportunity as, uh, as they do. But the opportunity in that set on, on top of it, on, on top of Bitcoin heals the world, makes the world better. And so, um, the output of that out opportunity means prices fall for even people that aren't on Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's a, um, it's just an honest ledger that, that moves to, uh, it, um, um, more and more of the productive capacity of the world to us. Now there's absolutely incredible businesses that can be built on that as they deliver value to other people. Um, just like there were incredible businesses that were built on top of the technology stack that was TCIP, HTTP, this Riverside we're on right now is one of them that takes yep. advantage of that technology stack that wasn't available until entrepreneurs went and created a value built business on, on top of it. The iPhone is one we take for granted that it wasn't always there, but it uses the same technology stack. All of these opportunities on top of this technology stack, now that you have a decentralized secure base layer in Bitcoin, kind of the asset, but, but with lightning, Fediment, a whole bunch of other things that are developing on, 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 on layer two, layer three, you're having an explosion of opportunity that's building on top of that base uh, secure layer that is going to change the world. And it's going to bring people in. It's going to get easier and easier to use. And, um, and more and more people are going to uh, race to it because of, it provides value in, in their lives. Yeah. I find it so fascinating that also when you share this, you know, like talent is evenly distributed and opportunity is not like it. For a lot of people, including people who call themselves pro progressives, quote unquote, mm -hmm. this is what they would want, right? Like, like have equal opportunity for anyone, uh, perhaps get to a real meritocracy, you know, where, um, you know, pe people who do the best at their job, whatever it is, you know, they, they uh, get rewarded the most. And while you, and also in the book, you know, you have a strong case for deflation, and you know lowering the cost through technology it's generally viewed though like a bit negatively right in economic circles but like wh why do you think people are so uh, against because, this, be, this be, be, yeah. because they haven't done it at the first principles nor give nor nor understood i i would say uh, in in what i w watch very few people think in first principles uh very few people think in second and third or, or third or fourth order effects of changes yeah. Um, in other words, they're predicting the present forward. Yes. They're, um, they're not predicting the future because, because of that to predict the future, you have to really think in first principles, you have to understand human action on when, when something changes, uh, benefits so greatly, what do people do as a result? And then what are the, what's the corresponding action of the existing system? What does it do? So if you just think to if this is imposing prices fall the marginal cost of production and we have exponentially increasing productivity that it's imposing that reality on the world protected by energy as long as it stays decentralized and secure everything i just said is inevitable it's repricing the world versus the other way around but people won't believe that and they'll price it from their existing system and they'll give more power to it and so what would the existing system do as more and more people leave to build on the system of true truth, hope, freedom in the existing system? What would it do? So remember the existing system, government gets bigger and bigger and people say those people, it's only us. There are no, those people there, there is no, they it's us. <laughs> it's it's so also, uh, I, I don't know what the quote is, but it's also like that we don't realize 
how much power we actually have or like how few people are actually currently in power. Right? Like but how, but how few actually, of us it, it needs. It, it, it's only us. Yeah. And so as more and more people move to the honest system and trans transact and more move more benefit there, and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger through the network effect on the base layer, people holding in self custody and the network effect on layer two or three, more and more value uh, accruing there. And it's, and it's, the incentives are better there. More and more yeah. people move. Yeah. And then what would the existing system do? Print money faster. And so as it prints money faster and destroys people within the existing system, more people move. Yeah. And what would it do then print money faster and less and less base. So this will take a long time to play out, but if, but, but people don't realize how much power they have into just tuning out of the existing system that is based on a lie. And to, and to, to it, illustrate yeah. that, like, what is your, what is your timeline there then? How, how, so, how far do we have to zoom out? So when people ask me this, I, I, I I'm actually honestly confused by the question. And I'll, no, I'll like, tell you I why. don't want uh, no, 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 but, but, I, right? but, but I'm actually honestly confused by the question hmm. because, and I'll tell you why my, uh, my lake house cost $1.4 million three and a half years ago. And it cost, uh, 300 Bitcoin. My lake yeah. house cost uh, $2 million this year right now. And it costs 50 Bitcoin. Yeah. So people are waiting while it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's just it, so, so in other words, I'm already living in the future and other people. And so a lot of people just, a lot of people thought uh, like that, we can go or, to the future or, 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 now. <laughs> right? yeah, everybody yeah. has a choice right now to go to the mm -hmm. future. So my, so the whole bunch of people around my lake house and all those people think their house just went up six, uh, $600,000. Yeah. And what really happened, it fell by 250 Bitcoin. Yeah. And so, and that's going to continue and it's going to continue forever. So, um, so it depends what you, world you want to measure in and, and all, again, all of the war and divide and everything else that we see out of the wor world today is a result of the system that we live in Yeah, that people are giving more power, more power to. So when, uh, right now. Yeah, like, uh, this, <laughs> uh, this is great because I, I wrote down another question um, because you, you also talk about, you know, what the generational impact of adopting something like Bitcoin could be. And, you know, we hear Greg Foss say we do this for the kids a lot. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, like, how can we influence the future by acting now? But the answer is act now. Act now. Just start, yeah. like spend more time here. Spend more. The, and, and you're I, I keep saying this. Your impact, every one of our impact, we matter. We touch people with your your voice. You matter. So if you want to spend more time in the existing system, yelling at that system, you're impacting it. You're making it stronger. If you want to spend more time in, in this system with people that are building this new system, you're impacting it, making it stronger. And so spend more time in the new system. You'll be happier. Yeah. I totally agree with that, obviously, but I do also understand that it's hard for people who are in the current system and are, and maybe are, are doing the work or are total oblivious, um, right? Like how, how does one start, right? Like is that just saying enough is enough when you, you know, buy a banana for $5 or how, how do you see that? Oh, I just lost you for a sec, Bram. Oh, no, I, I said, you know, like, I, I totally agree with you, obviously, right? Um, but but there's a lot of people who are in the current system and they are oblivious or maybe they start doing the work. Um, you know, what what in your view is like a, a trigger for someone to actually start or like what should they ask themselves first? If not, you know, when they buy a banana for $5, they think, you know, this is ridiculous. Uh, what is going on? Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I can't tell you for, so that's why I wrote the book because I knew people couldn't see this. Um, and I, I figured by tying it to technology to, to, they could understand how fast technology was moving in their lives, how much abundance it was trying to give them. Um, they would start to question some of the other things 
why does the world look like this? So to, to me, asking yeah. questions, asking questions or starting where somebody, uh, somebody is trying to solve their own problem, uh, yeah. meeting them where they are is the place to, uh, it is, it is the place to ask the question instead of telling somebody. So yeah. when somebody can, so, when somebody can explore what for, for them, why, when they can come to the conclusion themselves, then, uh, then it sticks. People don't want to be told. They yeah. they typically fight back against being told something. Yeah, I fully agree. I, I, uh, I think like, uh, six months ago, I really understood that I should switch from telling to asking. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, what, and what's the most compelling, like counter argument if you, that you've heard against these views and how do you respond to them? I haven't heard one yet. I, I, I honestly, so. yeah, I, so I, honestly I, I, I haven't heard. Of, I did a debate with uh, uh, um, uh, George, George, Gammon. Uh, George Gammon the other day on on Peter McCormick, and 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 by the way, I, I actually I like George a lot, but but he's looking through the system of the past, or I suspect he's looking through the system of the past, and he, he's and he says human nature will uh, will keep it there. Well. My, my question is how, um, how would human nature keep it there? Because by voting, so if human nature says, I'm going to vote for more manipulation of money, Bitcoin doesn't care, right? It, yeah. Yes. This, that system will fail faster, but Bitcoin keeps on imposing a discipline until people realize they can't fight with it. It's an honest ledger that, uh, that, that it, it keeps on posing that discipline. So, well, there's some interesting kind of inside those arguments, why people have their own beliefs. I haven't seen one yet that, uh, that, that, that counteracts what I just said about if it stays decentralized and secure, yeah. that, um, ultimately it's repricing everything else. Yeah. Um, now I'm open to the fact if somebody wants to, why I keep saying if is for two real reasons. Um, I'm, it's not that I'm worried about it one iota. I want the first reason is I want people to try to attack it in that vector to be able yep. to say, um, so they can understand how decentralized and secure it is. And the second reason I say it is, is that by running a node, you probably run a node, I run a node and everything else that, that I would have to act in my best against my best interest to, to, to change it. And so the hunt, yeah. call it the hundreds of thousands of other node runners that are all private uh, behind Tor networks and everything else all over the world would have to do the same thing. And so I try to say why I say if too is, is to, to push on there to say, why would we, what would we, how would we have to be tricked to be able to go against our self-interest yeah. and to keep yeah, yeah. to 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 understand that that's pr probably the the only attack factor. Yeah, yeah. I I would recommend everyone to uh, actually l listen to that episode. I really enjoyed it, and I I also <laughs> thought it was interesting that you know a lot of your rebuttals were the same all over again, right? Like as you said, if it stays decentralized and secure, then it will do, just stay as is. And and I agree that. The answers of George, or perhaps anyone looking at it from the other system. Uh, now that I think of it, is interesting. It's like a, it's it's an it's an abstract answer abstracted on on another abstraction, yeah. right? And and basically, George says um, that we cannot trust ourselves, and that's why we will follow these people who will you know point to a bad guy or give us free money or whatever. But it's so interesting because that's the entire point of Bitcoin. The protocol, in my opinion, is the realization that we cannot trust ourselves, which is fine. That's why we have a protocol that just is. And you have the choice to adopt it and follow, follow the rules or not. And you, and you stay in a system where you follow the rulers, right? So actually, when you look at it from George's point of view, we cannot trust ourselves. That's... I would say cementing the the Bitcoin thesis in a sense. So that that's actually what I that's actually what I see. Like even the his arguments were in in other words, you're gonna have less and less people that are going to um to be able to trick in the existing system. And yes. over time and over time it's gonna transition and more people are going to uh, more people are going to see 
that the system based on rules that can't be fucked with yeah. um, imposes that and imposes that. Now, I, this, why this, why? Yeah, you cannot oh. trick because you have to prove, right? Exactly. Like, you like in Bitcoin, work. you have to prove, like there's no, now, now he's, there's no tricking. He, 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 yeah. He's right. If, if you, if you could make it non-decentralized and secure, or you could create paper Bitcoin everywhere else, he's right. The humans will do that and they'll do everything they can to try to take power. In fact, that's what Ethereum is, right? Vitalik was on Bitcoin before, but that's what mm -hmm. Ethereum is. That's, uh, that's what, that's what all of these other coins are tried to do. That's what Bitcoin cash is a whole bunch of people that were the, the had more power in the old system decided to do it, to, to do a change it's so the that they ego, could aggregate right? more control. It's right? the ego. I am better. <laughs> yeah. So the beautiful yeah. thing about that is we have a pretty good long history and more and more and more that if you, if you mess with it, you're the one that gets, you're the one that gets killed. Right. This, the protocol keeps yeah. on, it uh, keeps on moving. It is. And, 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 and it also allows you to mess with it, right? Like Bitcoin cash, yeah. like, yeah. you know, do like your people, thing, people, try it out. Yeah. Go, <laughs> go, go crazy. And those people that end up doing it, they get liquidated and, yeah. and, 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 and the coins and the coin and Bitcoin get redistributed to a whole bunch of honest brokers that yeah. are, they're holding. So, so in that discussion too, I, I would say. It, it, it was interesting to me too. And I, I've, again, I like George. And I think over time he's come a long way in Bitcoin already. And I think uh, just like everybody, see, it's easy to think, even for myself, it's easy to think I always knew all these answers and I didn't, right? Yeah. You have to go through the work to be able to understand. And once you do, you think everybody else should know and they're going through their own work. Which is again ego, right? Yeah. If you think, yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Like once, yeah, once you see Bitcoin, I'd say, and all these things that are attached to this, it's like it's like the same things coming back all the time. Actually, interesting. Yesterday, um, you know, I will publish this in like two, two, three weeks. But yesterday was the fake uh, BlackRock ETF uh, pump. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you saw people talk about yeah, all these people got liquidated because they were lever leverage and blah blah. And then again, I think, but then you don't, you don't deserve to own Bitcoin. That's, this is the whole thing well, is th this is the essence, right? Yeah. If you try to fuck around, you will get burned because this thing doesn't, doesn't care. And this Ma was a prime, prime example of that. Uh, Matt Odell's yeah. stay humble and, st and stack saps is just perfect. That's right? it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So how do you think, you know, the like more moral fabric of society could change if you know, the principles behind Bitcoin or the deflationary economics would, would actually be adopted? Like, does it address any like existential issues that humans have, you think? Yeah, all, all of them. Um, it it okay. literally does. It, it, it's, 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 that, it's that big a change. It, it, and, and, it, and I said this probably thousands of times, but if you just ask, we're living in two systems right now and where you spend time will matter for your life. But, but think about what the world would look like on a dishonest ledger that had to become more dishonest over time. And you, and you were living in that dishonest ledger. Um, and the incentives yeah. accrued it's against that away. dishonest <laughs> ledger, who would what win, we are, who would lose. Would be... That's so right. who would, who would win, who would lose, what would the world look like? It would just be a mirror reflect, reflection of all the actions of the world on top of a dishonest ledger. It's like, it's really simple. Yeah. And then ask yourself, so that's the world you live in today, or most people live in today. And when they're looking at the news or the governments or looking at all of the, or, or, or giant companies or, uh, that they're operating on top of that dishonest ledger, that's what you're seeing and ask yourself, uh, what would the world look like on an honest ledger? What would it look like on something, um, w that, that drove the incentives to the, to the productive capacity to productive people in the world instead of the rents, re rent seekers, what would that world look like? What, what would you see different? And so which world do you want to see depends on what le ledger because that's really is if you wanted to simplify Bitcoin, that's what it is. Yeah. You have a dishonest ledger or an honest ledger. What would you expect to see? 
inside both of them, it literally changes everything. It changes when it's, um, it, 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 when people say Bitcoin fixes the world, it's, it, it, um, it's not hyperbole. It changes everything. Yeah. And it's actually the, I, I would say like the counter arguments, quote unquote, of people who say, you know, when you say something like this, fix the money, fix the world, that it's such a, such a big thing. And like, you're, you're just trying to have the price go up, et cetera. But it's, it's just bigger than that. Like I, I, I'm also really working and, and, and trying to figure out like how, how can I start these, I almost want to say like bigger conversations that are not even about Bitcoin, right? Like Bitcoin is a solution, but first people have to understand what they are actually, you know, operating in and what the system is and that they don't know a lot of things, right? Yeah, I haven't seen, uh, as as people kind of talk about the problems in the existing world that they're worried about, most of the, the if you just went number down one to 10, I haven't seen one of those things that Bitcoin doesn't solve. Yeah, I right. agree. Every one of yeah. them. Um, and then if you went 10 to 20, it would solve those too. And it solves them because the incentives, incentives run our lives and send and incentives run the world. Like, but think about in this existing system, people are working harder and harder and harder every year for less and less and less. Yeah. Well, um, when the world should look the opposite, they should be get, uh, getting more and more naturally as a result, not just in their technology things in houses and everything, all prices. So, so people, th um, even some people that have read my book think I'm just talking about technology, but technology is in everything. Technology is, we don't build houses like we did 50 years ago. Um, we don't have supply chains like we did, uh, uh 50 years ago. We had technologies in energy technologies everywhere. So yeah. all of these things would be falling to the marginal cost of production. Yeah. So, do you think there are any like spiritual or philosophical teachings that resonate with the core principles of yep. Bitcoin? I think that this is, I think all of these things, whether it's philosophy, I think if you kind of, um, or, or, or religions, I think they're, uh, ultimately a level of consciousness, um, and science and, uh, and, and are different ways up the mountain different insights and at the top yeah. of the and at the top of the mountain it all looks the same but if you're if you're midway up the mountain and looking across you can't see kind of the other person's viewpoint you can't see that you can't see lower um or, or across i think these things merge and i think they merge because um everything's energy um yeah. um every um i think everything's quantum that means the universe is quantum. Mm -hmm. Um, and that means we are quantum as well. And these, uh, and, and, um, and I think these things merge over time, a time. And if you think about Bitcoin as a peer to peer internet backed, bounded by energy, it allows us to rise in consciousness as a result of, uh, uh, moving in that world. Now I know that would be really hard to see for people. And it's a big concept that I just, uh, talked about and I didn't, I gave it two seconds, but, uh, but if you were, um, if you were angry, um, the mirror reflection of pe around people in your life would, you'd see anger. You yes. couldn't, it's really hard for you to see love, right? Mm -hmm. If you were, if you had apathy, you would, wouldn't see, nothing would trigger you and different levels of, of consciousness you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to see the, what they, uh, there was, it doesn't. So your, your level of consciousness is describing the world you see yeah. back at you. And I think, uh, I think over time, Bitcoin allows a rise in consciousness of the world. Yeah. Well, I fully agree. I also believe everything is a quantum. And as you said, a peer to peer network of energy that sounds like humans also, right? Yep, so totally. so, bi so is. Bi Bitcoin is. It's a, it's a fractal of the same thing, yeah. just like, uh, this could be a whole nother conversation, by the way, <laughs> but I want to say like, yeah, just like everything is a fractal of, of, of the same thing, uh, you know, with, with, uh, the structures that exists in, in nature and the universe and within us, etc. 
Um, so do you also believe, I heard someone say this last week, which is interesting. If, if you follow this, right, and, and you are into this and you believe this, then you would probably also think that Bitcoin uh, was a discovery and not an invention then, right? Like that, that it was always there in a sense. Yep. And I, and I buy that. I, 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 I interchange those, but I lean more to discovery. Yes. All right. So this podcast is called Bitcoin for Millennials, right? Because I think it's important to, you know, educate my own uh, generation that, you know, especially in the Western world hasn't really learned about finance, economics, etc. But you are part of another generation before us, X, born between 65 and 80. <laughs> like, what are, the, what are the things that you have run into trying to explain Bitcoin to your generation? Uh, I, I think it's some... So I wrote, wrote about this in the, the book. Um, in times of great change, experts, uh, um, experts aren't typically who you go to because they can't... They, the same thing that created them being an expert, they'd seen so many things that that they discounted. So, so when really great change comes, they discount it too, and they don't uh, op uh, have an open and curious mind. And Bitcoin, because it'll rip everything, your belief system down, because it uh, operates, it's the first time in human history that something existed that was decentralized and secure. Like we, you always, throughout our history books, something would always be co-opted because money was subordinate to laws. And if you could control the money, you could control everybody. You could tax the entire world through that control of money. So you could tax all, you could, you could take a sliver of all human labor on, 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 on top of that. So, so I just go, if Bitcoin was truly decentralized and secure, and that's what I do where I did a lot of work, it would, it would impose a totally different discipline to where we're going compared to what of all the history books and everything else that we'd ever seen, because we'd never had something like that. And so, so that's such a big, that's such a big idea. You'd, it forced me down to be curious about where I could be wrong. What could this look like? How could you kill it? What would it take? How much power would try to kill it? What would that would look like over time? And as I understood that with an open, curious mind, I understood that, okay, assuming it does this, which I think is inevitable now, um, that means the future is unwritten and it doesn't need to rely on the past rules that we created. Also in the past, the winners write the history books. Yes. Right. So a lot of those would be filled. A lot of our past would be filled with errors that we're making on top of a system lo that looks really different and all of the people that were really great at understanding history and all the reasons that exists would be not very good at understanding the future for the same reason. Um, so I, I have, it's again, looking at it from the exactly. old thing or what has been right. Yeah. And I have empathy for those people, but there's many, many in, in my generation and older who, um, who do one of two things, push back against all of this and not without going deep enough to understand it. Yeah. Um, or, or just consider it's too big for them. Um, I'm going to let somebody else decide. The millennials. Well, is it also hard then for people to, because in Bitcoin, uh, People talk also about a lot about like sovereignty, you know, like, and, and also we talk about, you know, when, when you try to find things or, or triggers for people to actually go down the rabbit hole, it actually, you, you instantly take on a certain type of responsibility, right? Because when you say like, I live in a system that I didn't chose, uh, choose to live in, uh, I'm a, I'm a subject of it. I want to change it. Okay, now I have a problem, right? If I want to figure this out. So do you think that's also a thing that it's hard for people nowadays to take that agency and ownership in a sense? I think that's just, I think as more and more incentives accrue to the new system uh, to be able to do that, yeah. more and more people will take it. It'll also get that easier too. So uh, we have to remember, we have to remember that 
like lower and, the bar for them. Yeah, exactly. But, and, and we also have to remember that when you're explaining Bitcoin, like we are explaining now, and we haven't gone deep into the technical realm, but for people who have, um, a lot of society just doesn't have the time or inclination to be able to do that. So it's just they, they trust institutions to, because they think there's there's safety in trusting an institution to do them that for yeah. them. And I keep asking myself, how could regulation on top of a system that needs to steal your money work? Right? How could regulation to protect yeah. your money from a system on that's designed to steal it work? So, so, but it, but many people wouldn't be there, so they just trust the institution. They trust their bank. They trust all of these things. Yeah, that's a fallacy, of it's course. A, it, it, and, and, it, and it's fallacy, and so they don't go down down this. But. But when you're talking about a protocol type of technology like Bitcoin, it's TCIP, the base layer. And then you remember, you can't see what's available on the next layer until it's in front of you. And then you can't see the, the types of businesses or the types of value that can be built for uh, on top of it until lots of entrepreneurs go and use that technology to create really valuable things. I just understand how early we are um, in this process. And how early we are in in the world understanding this, because um, because it's it, those entrepreneurs and that all of those things are going to make make products and services and everything else that that ease the onboarding of billions of people onto Bitcoin in a way more simple technology in a way more simple understanding than they understand now. So yeah. we don't have, like, if you look around, I don't remember the last internet conference, <laughs> right? True. but, but in, in the nineties, you yeah. used to have them. Well, I went to the Bitcoin conference last week. I know, that's why, that's why, that's why <laughs> like, like now, yeah. right now we're, we're, we're still in the Bitcoin con uh, mm -hmm. conference stage, uh, 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 stage of this as people are trying to teach the technology and, and how to, how to do this. And, and as it becomes simpler and easier and as, as it offers more use cases for people, you'll have people coming on to this and not even understanding yeah. how Bitcoin has made their life so much better. Do you then see, see these new developments like CBDCs as a threat and no. a distraction probably? Well, it, it, it'll lower the bar, right? If they say you will get $100 or 100 euros if you uh, install this, uh, you know, CBDC wallet. So yeah. So, but again, what will happen to those hundred euros? They'll have to be be inflated faster. You have to be so all yeah. of these things. So, but it does yeah. extend the lifetime of the. I think those types of things actually accelerate Bitcoin. Hmm. I, I think I, I think number uh, we don't have enough time to go into it right now. Uh, right now, but there is no way in in that a free market can work. There's no way. So we sit on top of a free market. Yeah. So if the entire market, if the entire global market said, said, um, it's all CBDCs, um, and we control the, the, the market globally, and then each country inside those CBDCs played to the same rules, how would that work? Yeah, right? there is I no the, the, the living standards would have to go down precipitously. And um, all uh, all over the world, because where would the money come from to be able to do the to do that? So the the notion of a CBDC um, being able to work in um, globally, not I'm not saying it won't be tried, but all of these things are just I would say out of the existing system. All of these things yeah. are totally natural. So is war. So is expanding because you need to convince your people. Yeah that it's somebody else's fault and that's how you do it. So all of these things are natural out of the existing system. I just kind of said, okay, why am I even talking about that? Let's just move to, to how fast we can build the parallel system yeah. with way better benefits. And so, yeah. so billions of people can move on. Yeah, I fully agree. I think it's also because those are the things that people see also see perhaps, right? Yeah. So it's, it's like, you can ignore it, but perhaps addressing it well maybe if you address it you legitimize it but it's a it's a thin uh, line right well, so, well somebody came somebody came to me with the same question on a conference that that we is a weekend the same so so um and effectively as a reason not to get into bitcoin and and I and I said okay so your reason for not getting into bitcoin is you're fearful that governments will stop you from getting into bitcoin 
and 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 you're going to wait for them to do that i said like they are still point. like it's, it, it, it's <laughs> yeah. so insane right so yeah. so in other words you're making that happen through your actions yeah. and while they're screaming at you and they're saying get out of the burning building right now because we're yeah. going to lock up your money forever yes um and and they're staying stuck out of fear of the thing and out of fear of the thing that saves them from it it's uh, so i do understand though some people will do that but yeah. uh but this is crazy yeah all right last question i ask everyone the same question what's a core belief that you will never let go oh i got lots of those but uh but um <laughs> i would say um integrity um and and why i say um and why i say that is uh i used to uh, this was a core belief in my business and and finance uh, and a bunch of financiers said that can't be a core belief uh because everybody has to have that in business and i said it if it, uh, and I believe a core belief is something you'd stand up for no matter what, um, even if you lost everything. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I said back to them, I said, I said, if everyone had that in business, the world would look very different. And so, uh, and so that, that, that would be one of them. curiosity is another empathy is another, but thanks. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks also again for coming on. Um, what's the, what's the best way that people who don't know you yet, where they can follow you and, and read your thoughts? Um, probably just, uh, my website, jeffbooth.ca. And the reason I say that specifically too, is too many people, there's too many scammers out there that are using, uh, different, I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook, um, other different things. So they're taking copies. If my profile, um, isn't listed on my site so in my social media profile, then it's not me. So beware. So, so jeffbooth.ca is probably best. Great. Um, yeah, keep in touch and uh, perhaps uh, we talk again. You bet, Bram. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke, that's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.